is proud to present Pick Your Brain! For the game, Emily. <laughs> you did it! Hey, way to go! You did it! <laughs> What's it going to be? Number one. Well, you got a thousand dollars cash. Congratulations. Your uncle. Your uncle, you won the game. What does it take to win $5,000? Don't ask me. Ask today's contestant. He's getting straight A's in gym and recess. Me, Brian. But she's tired of being passed over by the daytime Emmys. Me, Morgan. And she's trying to build a space shuttle out of an old toaster. Me, Lauren! <laughs> Greetings, I'm 2XL, your resident know-it-all in Broadway's longest-running musical. And I want to pick your brain! And now here's the host of the game where it's not insane to pick your brain, Mark Summers! Clark would do. Welcome to you. It's Pick Your Brain, where each week we give away great prizes, and one player also wins a $5,000 savings bond to use for the college education. Pretty neat, huh? Let's get started. We have wonderful contestants, and in round one, we give you all the answers, but you must select the subject. So, 2XL, what are they today? Let me search my memory banks, Mark. Aha! My circuits tell me that our contestants can choose to meet a crop expert or a lawn loser. Press button number one to meet a crop expert and button two to meet a lawn loser. You make the decision. Push the number one right now if you want a crop expert. Push the number two if you want a lawn loser. Majority rules and the answer is... Two of you wanted a crop expert and you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to tune in to the newsman with the nice hair but no clue. Ned Koffel. Let's watch. Hello, I'm Ned Koffel, and this is Brainline. <laughs> Peanuts, a nutty legume found in the ground, or what I get paid to do this show. Here, live from the past, direct via satellite, George Washington Carver. Mr. Carver, my notes tell me that you are a famous astrologer. Now, how long have you been studying the zodiac? No, I'm not an astrologer. I'm an agronomer, Ned. You know agronomy, the study of agriculture? I use what I learned to create hundreds of uses for the peanut, including peanut wood dyes, rubbing oil, inks, and soap. So you are the creator of that lovable comic strip, Peanuts. <laughs> what? No, Charles Schulz is the creator of Peanuts. I'm famous for my discoveries with the peanut, the soybean, the sweet potato. Well, I hope you don't mind my saying so, but a man with your skill should really consider teaching. Don't you agree? Who does your research, Abbott and Costello? I was a teacher in 1896. I joined the faculty of Tuskegee Institute. That was the Alabama school that Booker T. Washington headed. Well, I knew that. Uh, of course, it was here that you taught your students how to rotate their clocks, you know, spring forward and fall back. No, not clocks, crops. Most farmers were still only growing cotton, and the soil was losing all its minerals. In order to let the soil replenish itself, you plant different crops each year. You rotate them. Don't you know anything? Well, I do know our time is up, so one last question. Is it chunky or smooth? What would be your choice? <laughs> Get a life, Ned. <laughs> Not too much upstairs there, but uh, Ned's an all right guy. In this round, you get 25 points. If you answer correctly, put your hands on your brains. Let's get started. True or false? Agronomy is the study of the zodiac. Yes, Lauren? False. False is right. 25 points right on the board. Way to go. You got 25. Here is our next one. At what Alabama school did George Washington Carver teach? 2XO, they didn't know. Maybe you can tell them. Time's up. Better luck next time. The correct answer is George Washington Carver taught at the Tuskegee Institute. Okay, here's our next question for 25. When George Washington Carver was a teacher, who was the head of the Tuskegee Institute? Lauren. Booker T. Washington. Another 25 points. You got 50 now. Way to go. You got 50. Nothing for Morgan. Nothing for Brian. Rubbing oil. Soap. Paper. According to the interview, which did George Washington Carver not derive from the peanut? Yes, Brian? Paper. Paper, you're right. You get 25 points over there. 25 for you. Put you in second place. Here's our next question. Who is the creator of the comic strip Peanut? Yes, Lauren? Charles Schultz. You got it. Another 25. You're up to 75 in a good lead. 
Final question in round one. According to the interview, in order to replenish this soil, what should you do with your crops? Yes, Brian? Rotate them. You rotate them. You are right. Take a look at this score right now, ladies and gentlemen. Lauren's in first with 75 points. Brian, you have 50. Morgan, nothing just yet, but a lot of time to gain some extra points. And right now, we're going to hear a Pick Your Brain teaser from 2XL. That is correct, Mark. Tell me, do you know which president is pictured on the $500 bill? Well, I don't see a lot of those, so the answer is no. But I know when I come back, he's going to tell me the answer to that. We're going to meet the partners of these players, and we're going to have a lot more fun when Pick Your Brain continues. So stay with us. There you go. You don't want to miss what's next, so stay tuned. Welcome back to more Pick Your Brain. Welcome back to Pick Your Brain. I'm 2XL. Do you know which president is pictured on the $500 bill? If you guessed William McKinley, you were right on the money. And now back to our wealth of information, Mark Summers. Well, it is me. Welcome back to round two, where the players and their partners stick what they play, getting closer to today's $5,000 scholarship prize. Who's in the lead? They get to come over here first. That would be Lauren. Join me on this side, Lauren, if you would, please. I would like to uh, clarify something. Lauren may look like a uh, familiar face. She was on a game earlier this season, and we had some mechanical problems. We've invited certain contestants back because of that mechanical problem. And here you are one more time. And it's your mom, Paula, right? Yeah. Tell me about Paula. Well, this is my mom, Paula, and we enjoy going shopping together at the mall, and she enjoys taking me to all kind of bizarre and interesting places. And what's the most bizarre and interesting place, Paula, you've taken, Lauren, recently? Well, the most interesting place, uh, we went to the Marine Mammal Rehabilitation Center near the ocean. They rescue beached seals and sea lions. Oh, how nice. Yeah, very nice. I bet it would be. Well, you know how this works, but 2XL, in case somebody might not have turned into the show at one point or another, and gosh, I find that hard to believe, uh, tell them what games they could play. Very good, Mark. We have three ways to pick your brain. Fizz quiz, 2 by 2 or XL's extra. Scramble them up, hit number 1 or 2 or 3, and you'll play the game that you stop it at, and where's it going to be? Number 2, and you get XL's extra. Very good. If you get 5 out of 5, you get a special prize. What is it, 2XL? Today's prize is a telescope. Push Nell High-Tech Astronomical Telescope, sleek and contemporary, designed to appeal to young and mature viewers alike. Explore the world beyond from Bausch and Lomb. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, if Ned Koffler uses that, it's got to be pretty good, huh? Hey, uh, you get to choose a category, and uh, what's the category today? Well, categories are islands or team names. Which would you prefer? Team names. Team names. Okay, six Major League Baseball teams are named after animals including birds or fish. I need you to alternate, name five. If you wait uh, and take too much time or you repeat an answer, you're going to hear this. Thank you so much. And that means we're going to stop right there. Six Major League Baseball teams are named after animals, including birds or fish. Who's going to start off? I need five. I will. Lauren, good luck. Go. Marlins. The Marlins is one. Orioles. The Orioles would be two. Oh, too much time. You got 100 points, though. Marlins, Blue Jays, Cardinals, Cubs, Orioles, and Tigers. Not bad. Back to your podium. Brian, join me over here. That's one of those tough questions that you know it at the moment, and then all of a sudden you put on the pressure spot, and it's hard to do. Now, Brian, I understand this is your teacher? Yes, yeah, she's my math, sixth grade math teacher. Very good. And tell me about Nora. Well, she's my sixth grade math teacher, and currently in school we are um, performing a play, uh, Shakespeare's Tempest. And, really? Um, She's producing it, and I'm directing it. Are you really? Very nice. Very good. Is that what you'd like to be when you get older, a director? Maybe. Maybe. And Nora, tell me about this student. That's good. Well, I am Brian's math teacher this year and last year, mm -hmm. and he's an outstanding math student and a very good citizen at school. Very good. And yeah, I just want you to know that the town I grew up in, the post office was Nora, Indiana. I don't know why what I threw that in. It? Yes, it's spelled right. the same way. And this little tidbit, you get no points it. for it. But uh, <laughs> we have number one and number three left. Uh, could you scramble things up one more time to us, Al Brian? Hit one or three. Your Love choice. Three. Number three. Oh. Oh. oh, I'm so happy yes. about this. It's a fizz quiz. Could you join me over here, Brian and Nora? Just come this way, if you would. Stand right over here. Now, I would like to show you our wheel of misfortune, okay? <laughs> now, Nora, being a teacher, sometimes students like to get even with their teachers, right, Brian? Yes. Oh. 
I'm going to show you how to do that. Nora, right up here, oh, please. Boy. Okay? <laughs> now, take a look at this, Brian. Up here on the board, I'm going to ask you five questions, and all of the answers are dates, and the dates are up here. Take a look. We have 1963, 1881, 1959, 1773, 1969, 1932, and 1776. Now, to get a better angle, you may want to step down there. But here's what's going to happen. I'm going to ask you a question. And each time I ask you a question, you will yell a date that's up there on that board. We will then point your teacher or the arrow in that particular direction, okay? If you're right, I'll say right, I'll ask you another question, you get 50 points. But if you're wrong, I'll say guess again, and you get to kind of spin her around as many times as you want. Now, Brian, if you want, you can say the heck with the points and just keep spinning her for the next 60 seconds, okay? But I hope you don't do that. I want to get you the, the points. Nora, you feeling okay? Uh, I feel fine, I think. <laughs> 50 points for each correct question, 60 seconds to get all five clock starts on the first question. Good luck. What year was the Declaration of Independence signed? 1776. 1776 is what he says, and that is correct, 50 points. Here's the next one. What year did Hawaii become a state? 1959. 1959, he says Hawaii became a state, and another 50 points, that's right. What year did a man first land on the moon? 1969. 1969. You've got 150 points. What year? What year did Martin Luther King lead the historic march on Washington? 1881. 1881. Put it over there, and that is incorrect. What year did Martin Luther King lead the historic march on 1963. Washington? 1963. 1963. That is correct. Here's your final question. What year was the Boston Tea Party? 1881. 1881. That is incorrect. What year was the Boston... 1773. 1773. You've got it. 250 points. Way to go. Congratulations. Come on up here, Brian. Come on up here. You know what? 250 points. Nora, you did such a great job. I want to say thank you to Brian. <laughs> thank you, Brian. Yes, I want to say thank you to Nora. Thank you, Nora. Uh, we'll see you later. Thank you, Nora. Round of applause for Nora. Bye-bye. Oh, we'll see you later. You guys go back to your podium, or you go back to your podium. <laughs> and who would be next? Uh, gosh, that would be Morgan. Morgan, why don't you join me right over here? <laughs> and, uh, Martin, I believe you're part of the team. <laughs> Now, tell me about Margie. Is this your mom? This is my mom. Yeah? And her name is Margie. Yeah, and then what else? She's an interior decorator. Uh-huh. And she's very special to me. Why is she so special? Because she takes me lots of places, uh -huh. and we do all sorts of really cool stuff together. Oh, good. And Margie, tell me about your daughter, Morgan. Morgan's a lot of fun to be with, and I enjoy taking her all over. We like to see a lot of theater together, live oh, theater. that's good. My kids and I like to do that as well. That's good. Well, you got two by two, and uh, you could score a lot of points here and help yourself come up from uh, number three to maybe number two or one, and I'm going to give you a couple of choices, and you decide uh, what one you want Margie to answer, not the one you want to answer. You take too much time between answers, Margie, you'll hear this. <laughs> we'll have to move on to the next one. So, Morgan, you know how it works. Good luck. 50 points for five out of five gives you 250. Here we go. Cities, national or international? National. National. Which U.S. city, formerly the nation's capital, is home to Columbia University? <laughs> Too much time will go on to the next one. Dinosaurs, the critters or the show? The critters. The critters. The dinosaur known as Triceratops gets its name because it had three what? Horns. Three horns, 50 points. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth or Royal Flush? Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth. What London Palace is the official residence of Britain's Queen Elizabeth? Buckingham Palace. Another 50 points. Way to go. <laughs> Roseanne or Fat Tuesday? Roseanne. <laughs> On her show, Roseanne's husband, Dan, is played by an actor who also starred in the film The Babe. Name this big talent. John uh, Goodman. Yes, another 50 points. Here's your last one. Thermometer or anemometer? Thermometer. What is the silver-colored liquid that is found inside of a thermometer? Mercury. Mercury, you got it. Hold on there. You got 200 points. Four out of five is magnificent. It was tough. What U.S. city, formerly the nation's capital, is home to Columbia University? Do you have any idea? Virginia? No. You know what it is? It's New York. New York. But you guys did great. 200 points. Back to your podium. As a matter of fact, let's check the scores. And we find out that Brian's in first place with 300, but Morgan's moved into second with 200. Lauren, you are now in third with 175. Things have moved around, but, you know, we're going to give away a $5,000 college scholarship, and anybody can win that, and we'll all find out together who that is. Let's put your brain continue, so stay with us, please. Good going, Brian. Don't touch that dial. Pick your brain. We'll be right back. Let's go back to more fun and surprises on Pick Your Brain. Welcome back.
back to round three of Pick Your Brain, where we'll find out who will win today's $5,000 saving fund. But according to my circuits, nobody goes on empty-handed. Some of you may receive these great prizes. The incredibly wet and wonderful Super Soaker XP-150. It's one of the most powerful water guns we make because it comes from the next generation of Super Soakers. And Hershey syrup or chocolate milk mix for rich, really chocolatey chocolate milk. Or strawberry syrup for strawberry flavored milk. Great tastes from Hershey. Plus electronic Geo Safari geography game. Learning made fun. An exciting game of knowledge for one or a whole group. Electronic Geo Safari from Educational Insights. Thank you to us, Del. This is it, the final round of play. We're turning on your brains. Wins the game and guarantees one of you $5,000 in college scholarship money. Now, to win this game, you got to light up all five of your podium brains. But you know the rules on this game. If you're in first place, you've earned an advantage. You get two brains lit up, Ryan. And that means you only have to answer three correct. Now, Morgan, you were in the bottom, but now you're in second, which means you've earned one brain. Have to answer four. And, Lauren, if you answer five, you win that scholarship. Put your hands on your brains. Let's get started. Good luck to everybody. At the time of the Revolutionary War, how many American colonies were there? Yes, Morgan? Thirteen. You are right. You have tied up Ryan right away. You've got two. Tied for first. In the comic strip Calvin and Hobbes, what species of animal is... Yes, Brian? Tiger. Is Hobbes. You're right. You've added another brain. Back in first. Three for you, two for you. Nothing yet for Lauren. What president shares his name with the capital... Yes, Morgan? George Washington? No, that's incorrect. I'll repeat it. Okay, Lauren, you have jumped in. Lincoln? Lincoln is right. Yes, what president shares his name in the capital of Nebraska? Lincoln is right. You now have one brain. Here's our next question. In the movie, Batman Returns, what villain is portrayed by... Yes, Morgan? The Penguin. The Penguin. Danny DeVito, you have added another brain. Here's our next question. How many inches are there in two and a half feet? Uh, that would be Morgan. 30. Oh, you got it, boy, right before the buzzer, too. <laughs> Think about this, folks. Morgan, at the end of round one, was in third. At the end of round two, she moved into second. She currently is in first place. If she answers the next question correctly, she gets the $5,000 scholarship. Good luck to both you guys as well. Bill Clinton and Lisa Simpson both play what musical? Yes, Lauren? Saxophone. Saxophone. What musical instrument? You got number two. Good job. This is great. What is the largest of the five Great Lakes? That would be you, Brian. Lake Michigan. No, that is incorrect. Uh, Morgan or Lauren, can you take it? Yes, Lauren. Lake Erie. That is incorrect. Morgan, for the game, can you win it? Lake. <laughs> oh, Lake Superior. Lake Superior. Still anybody's ball game. Here's the next one. What huge state is nicknamed the Lone Star State? Yes, Brian. Texas. Texas, you've got four brains. <laughs> Tied for first now with Brian and Morgan. Lauren's got two. Good luck. What slapstick comedy team has members named Larry, Moe, and Curly for the, the game, Morgan? Studios. I'm sorry. The three studios. You got it. Congratulations. <laughs> Holy cow. What is it? Oh, my goodness. I believe that is the first time somebody has been in third and moved to second, gone all the way to the first uh, position. That is very exciting. Congratulations, Brian. I thought you were going to pull it out. You played a magnificent game. Yeah, thank you. As did Lauren. Let's hear it for Lauren. And I want to tell you, there are no losers on this team and on this game. Come on out here, Meredith. We want to give away some sweatshirts to get them on their way to college. Who wanted to go to California, Berkeley? Me. That's you, Brian. Way to go. Congratulations. And Georgetown, is that you, Morgan? Very nice. And Lauren, that means you wanted to go to Stanford, I'm assuming. Way to go. Join us over here, Morgan, if you would, please. We're going to give you a chance for a great big prize, but could you throw it to commercial, Meredith? Who is that? Messages. So don't go away. Stay with us, okay? Very nice. Congratulations, Morgan. You did it. Way to go. My circuits tell me pick your brain. We'll be right back. And now more fun and games on pick your brain. Town. So I tell you? Well, uh, guess what? $5,000 college scholarship that's yours. Nobody can take that away from you. Now, you want to be a politician? Yeah. Would you want to run for president someday? Mm, I could try. You could try. That's exactly... <laughs> How many people think a woman would be a great president? Look at that. 
I agree. I, I honestly believe that a woman could run this country better than any guy. I, I felt that way for a long time. You know, men are intimidated by, by intelligent women, and, and I think you would be a great president. I hope that I can vote for you someday. Now, Margie, Margie, uh, you are uh, an interior designer. Is, is that difficult work? I have to look at those little swatches of wallpaper, and I can never figure out how that looks on the wall. How do you do that? I guess it just becomes, it comes naturally after you just keep doing it a lot and you get used to it. You yeah, really start it. to see it. Well, I want to give away a great prize over here in 2XL. What are the choices today? Well, Mark, Morgan can either win an adventurous trip to space camp oh. or she can capture her memories with a new camcorder. Well, that would be fun. Space camp is kind of neat. Uh, I think you would really enjoy that, but the camcorder is great as well. Here's what you have to do. Match a picture, and as soon as you do that, that's what you win. We're going to scramble things up. One, two, three, or four. You can choose whatever you want. So 2XL, you're doing your job. Now it's up to Morgan. Push either one that you like. One, two, three, or four. And you got part of the camera there. Number two cannot be touched anymore. One, three, and four remain. Are you going to do it? Are you going to let your mom do it? Okay, Margie, one, three, or four, are you going to get that camera, or is it going to be something else? Three. Three. Oh, now see, that's half a space camp. So either one or four will determine what's going to happen and what you're going to take home with you today. Scrambling for the last time. Morgan, what's it going to be? One or four? Four. Number four. Hey, you got a camcorder. Tell us about a 2XL. It's a smart, compact VHS camcorder from Magnavox. Features a 10 to 1 zoom lens for great shots in any light and a flying erase head for easy editing from Magnavox. Smart. Very smart. That's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to have a great time with that, with that camcorder and the scholarship cash and prizes. We're over six thousand dollars congratulations and we would like to award that to you right now and here it is thank you meredith this certificate entitles morgan to a five thousand dollar u.s savings bond courtesy of toys r us thank you so much for being with us that's all the time we have i'm mark summers i'll see you next time when we take three more breaks hold on a second mark yes to xl well mark i have just one quick question for you what would that be why did the dog catcher only go after saint bernard's why did the dog catcher only go after St. Bernard's? Why, 2XL? He was getting paid by the pound. Paid by the pound. You know, ladies and gentlemen, i got to tell you, before we say goodbye, there's an old friend of mine here today. You've seen him on other shows I've worked on. Al Silvers, our producer. C come out of here, Al Silvers. Bring him out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Show me over here, Margie and Morgan. Al Silvers, I've got a treat for you. Bring out the wheel of misfortune. Al Silvers is going on here, ladies and gentlemen. Our producer, right up over here. Let's strap him in. Thanks for being with us here on Pick Your Brain. We'll see you again real soon. Grab him up there. The famous Al Silvers, let's hear it for him. Oh, my. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my. Let's get him in there. I want to spin him around. You didn't get a chance to go in there, Margie, did you? Would you like that up? You, did you try it out? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Not a problem, huh? Right. <laughs> it, oh, interesting. I found it rather interesting. <laughs> Mark Summers Wardrobe by Rick Pallet Menswear, Sherman Oaks, California. Find menswear with style, service, and value. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>